Well, morning again, everybody. Coach P here, out to meet the morning sun. And I have played on a ton of fantastic team. I told you guys. Played in two bowl games in college, really good teams. My Cal team was the winningest team in Cal at history since the 50s. Finished with the highest winning percentage of all time at Cal for modern quarterbacks. I played in the Arena League on a great football team with fantastic teammates. That team won the world championship in arena football and got rated the greatest team in the history of arena football. And there's a reason for all of this. And that reason is that my teammates were phenomenal. What does that mean? Well, when guys get done playing, they talk about what they miss most about the game. And yeah, we miss competitions and we miss the games and the ability to stretch yourself, to grow to challenge yourself by playing football against peers that are at the same level that you are. So at that very elite echelon, proving that you're the best, which is great. That's part of what we do as gladiators, that's it. But the biggest thing that everybody that I played with, the biggest thing that guys who played for a long time miss is the locker room. And there's a reason for that. When you have a shared purpose with a team, that is really dialed in to an actual purpose, not just their plan for checks, not just their plan because that's all they know how to do, but they are there with a shared purpose of becoming great, of winning a championship, of performing at their best. It is magical. And that is what teams and coaches are calling culture these days. How do you develop that culture? Well, as players, young players especially, we oftentimes stand there kind of with our hands up trying to figure it out and we depend on the coaches to create that culture. But I'm gonna let you in on something. It is up to you as a player to create that culture. I always talked about how you have to get buy-in from the players. As a leader, especially in the quarterback position, you need to buy in. You need to be a, one of the creators. How do you do that? You have to, every day when you come to practice, come with intent. Be intentional about what you are doing. You need to put your focus into what you are doing in that moment every single time. Meaning, when I am taking a snap, even if I am throwing a hitch, I am intentional about getting my footwork right, getting my delivery right, putting that ball exactly where I want it to be, having my accuracy be perfect every single time, and I say perfect, having exceptional accuracy. We'll talk about why perfect is ridiculous and why perfect kills great. But I need to perform at my peak on every single rep, which takes focus, which takes the ability to dial into the moment, which takes you being able to be present. You'll see that a lot of what I'm talking about with these things is about being present, is about mindfulness. But when you practice that way, your teammates will feel that. And then your job to create that culture. And again, it's on you, it's not on coaches, it's on you. The players have to create the culture. Now you need to challenge your teammates to create that culture too. What will happen is because human beings have that natural negativity bias that we talked about and because human beings are looking for the path of least resistance. They're trying to do the easiest thing. The human brain, this is just, it's not a knock on people, it's just the nature of us are trying to create the easiest path through life. It's trying to look for least conflict, trying to look for least harm, least danger. And so as a result, we tend to knock down those people who are putting in the extra effort, those people who are doing extraordinary things. We tend to troll them is the term they use nowadays, clown them when I, well, back when I was playing, mock them back in the 50s and 60s. But teammates will do that and they will, they will knock you, they will clown you, they will use peer pressure to try to bring your play down to their level. And the reason they do that is because they have that human instinct to not put out the extra effort. That's a natural thing. By the nature of it, as an athlete, you are already putting in more effort than the average person. But now, if you wanna be that exceptional leader, you wanna be part of those teams that you absolutely love. The reason I love the game was the locker rooms that I got to be on my teammates like Kyle Moore Brown, who I knew was there for me, was going to work until he had a heart attack every single snap. Teammates like Greg Hopkins, who I knew 
This guy would take a bite out of an anvil for me. He was so tough. But he was going to work. He did not accept half-ass as an option. These guys, you know, Mark Valvo, Chris Snyder, I go on and on, Joe Jacobs, on these teams, Derek Stingley. Like, none of these guys would accept half-ass as an option. And so as a result, their efforts now raised the level of the team because you can't get everybody on that level by nature. You can't convince everybody to be there, but you can bring your performance level in practice, your expectations of performance, your faith in outcomes up to a level and get your teammates around you to do the same thing. And as you do that, you will bring up the bottom performer to the highest level they can perform at. And so those are the teams that people love. And so what I'm telling you here today is, as a leader, as a person who wants great culture, if you want to win championships, if you want to be great, if you want to create greatness on your team, you need to bring your performance up, your integrity up, your intent up, your ability to be mindful and, and affect this play right in front of you to a championship level. And you need to make that a habit. And then you need to challenge your teammates to do the same thing. And at first you'll get one or two as people try to troll you, as people call you a practice all American, as people tell you to calm it down, don't do it. Bring that level up. Now I'm not saying hurt anybody. I'm not saying do stupid things in practice, but I'm saying bring that level here every single time and have your teammates see that. Because when you challenge somebody, when you stretch them, when you help them grow, that's when they love you. Coming down to their level, they're just gonna discard you. They're just gonna say, okay, that was fine. That was good. But now he's down to my level, I'm all good, I'm safe again. But if you challenge them, and if you create that growth within your teammates, then they will love you. Then you will create that culture. Then you will create the environment that the pro athletes I know hated to leave because it's that growth, it's that challenge, it's that ability that is truly the reward of sports. It's not about the championship cup. It's not about the trophy. That's all great but it's the growth that you get from it. It's meeting the expectations, the ridiculous, unreasonable expectations that you have for yourself. Meeting those expectations, growing, getting better, and creating that bond with your teammates. That's what people love, and that's what people hate to lose when they stop playing. I still miss it today. Appreciate you guys watching. Wanted some great encouraging words for you this morning out here on my walk. But that's the mindset you need to have. If you wanna be great, if you wanna win a championship, raise your game and challenge the teammates around you to raise their game. You create the culture. Don't wait for your coaches. Have a fantastic day. I will talk to you guys again soon.